Hey, what's up, everybody? Happy Saturday. Welcome to Sean's Rift Time Machine again. This week, we are going to cover rap rock crossover. Everybody's favorite topic. I know you've been waiting for it. Here it is. Um, I'm not the biggest hip-hop fan. I'm far from the biggest hip-hop fan. I never really liked the, the uh, rap-infused rock and roll that was popular when I was like late middle school and high school and all that. And its connection to new metal and all that stuff. I, I never really got into that. That was kind of a dark time for music, in my opinion. But one exception that I want to talk about is Rage Against the Machine. Uh, rap and rock crossovers were not new when Rage Against the Machine kind of hit its stride. Um, Public Enemy and Anthrax, Body Count, Suicidal Tendencies, the, you know, the thrash scene had been doing that for a really long time. But one of the things I really liked about Rage Against the Machine is, although I was not the biggest fan of, of hip-hop style, I thought it was really impressive that the music could match, you know, the, the rap flow vocal style, but still be like really heavy and, uh, and deliver the way a, a normal rock or metal song would deliver. Yeah, it's hard to explain. I'm sure that doesn't make a lick of sense, but the music really fits the vocal style for that band. And I still find it impressive to this day. And nobody has able, been able to really replicate that. Even, uh, you know, the same band minus Zach De La Roca, they've never been able to replicate what made Rage Against the Machine great. And they've had, you know, some pretty incredible musicians in their band uh, with Audio Slave and everything else. I love Chris Cornell, but it's not the same stuff. Anyway... Uh, my brother Brad had their debut album, and so I was familiar with a few songs from that CD. I didn't get to listen to it a lot, uh, but with the radio edits of Killing in the Name of and, uh, you know, when Bulls on Parade and Evil Empire came out, I was familiar with several of their songs, uh, but m a lot of my friends were big Rage Against the Machine fans, so I actually have more of a connection that way than, you know, originally finding the, the record with my older brother. I was reminiscing with a buddy of mine, Curtis, just a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about doing this. I was going to do a Rage Against the Machine episode, and it was just amazing how quick it could set you in a place. You know, as I started listening to some of these tracks again, it immediately takes you somewhere. And one of the places it took me was in my buddy Vince Dilly's uh, Volkswagen van. And uh, uh, we'd pile in there and drive all over crazy. Uh, lunch break on a lot of days would find us traveling from Magna out to West Valley to Wendy's because we didn't have a Wendy's in Magna at the time. And that was great because, you know, that meant four or five Rage Against the Machine songs all the way out to Wendy's and back. And that was a pretty solid way to spend a half an hour, if you ask me. Funny thing about it, too, though, is Vince had a, a sound system sound system in his, <laughs> his van. Basically, the whole, the whole back end would just go... Boom the whole time we were in there and if you didn't know the tracks you were you know you were screwed you you didn't know what was going on but yeah anyway that uh, that music is infused in my youth and uh, and I I really like it so Tom Morello is the guitar player for Rage Against the Machine and I don't think anyone would look at him and say he's like a guitar virtuoso he's not your typical rock rock and roll guitar icon you know um but one of the things I love about Tom Morello is Although I freely admit he's probably a much better guitar player than I am or will be anytime soon, um, he finds kind of his niche in a different way. It's not through uh, really fast, intricate guitar licks, but he plays a lot with effects and does really cool things with other equipment, with other tools to make his guitar sound really unique. Uh, from a Digitech whammy that just makes it go really funny sounds, regular wah pedals, other things that he would do to really make his guitar come alive. Uh, there are plenty of tracks where there's like scratch board sounds that weren't scratch boards. It was just him and his guitar. He was very creative and innovative. And uh, I think that, you know, he holds a special place in, in rock guitar history for his, his musical contribution. And I think he's proof that you don't have to be amazing at guitar to write killer songs that uh, will be forever remembered. So the song I'm going to play today is Know Your Enemy. It's my favorite Rage Against the Machine song. Um, it has a really cool intro. I, I, I don't play it great because it, it takes some practice and it's not something I typically play. But what he does is he silences the rhythm pickup and just uses the lead pickup and then uses the toggle switch 
like a pick. So every downstroke, you switch in between pickups. And it sounds, you know, bop, 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 like that. It's really cool. Um, he also plays this this lick originally with other effects. I think there's probably a, a harmonizer or, or, or an octave pedal or something that he's got on there to make it sound cooler than just your, your normal notes. But I'm going to play Know Your Enemy real quick at least the main uh, main riffs and uh, go give the song a listen and hopefully it takes you back to Vince's van like it does me. Cheers. Yeah, let's give me number one of them bomb tracks. Woo! <laughs> Good song. See you next week.